Welcome everyone back to one of my technical debacles. So for the four or five people who actually watched the last video where I upgraded the laptop that we do our streaming off of, um, it still is not at the level that I want, mainly because I bought the wrong laptop and it doesn't have a powerful enough processor or enough memory. So, oh, also the Wi-Fi, um, I think is a single band Wi-Fi card. So it only connects at 150 and doesn't even see the wireless end band. So I am going to upgrade. So what I've got here is, oh, by the way, there are no sponsors. I bought all this stuff. There is that. Uh, what we have is the ASRock A300, which is a AM4 socket motherboard that is smaller than an ITX. I think it said it was a CTX. I'm not really sure on that part. Um, but basically it is a fully functioned motherboard with an AM4, full AM4 socket. It will take up to a 65 watt processor. It has two SATA ports, so it's limited to two SATA drives. Um, has two M.2 drives and a M.2 Wi-Fi card. No PC Express for external um, graphics. Not that you could fit a card in this box because it is only 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters by I think eight or nine centimeters. So it's quite small. But we have that case with its power supply and everything. Uh, I have an AMD 2200G, which is the four core 3.5 gigahertz pro, um, 65 watt processor with the built-in uh, Radeon graphics. I believe it is the eight compute units, not the 11, cause that's the Ryzen five. To go with that, I have 16 gigs of HyperX 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM because Integrated graphics require faster memory to work better. Um, and to go with that, I have a, what company is this again? My Digital SSD M.2 SSD to go on the motherboard for the high speed disk access. Um, to go along with that, with the possible um, Wi-Fi interference in the building, because I can't connect currently on the laptop at higher than a uh, 144 megabit down uh, connection and it's literally less than six feet from the router that's sitting on the floor on the second floor. Um, I have bought one of these TP-Link Ethernet over power extenders um, to run downstairs so I can just hardline it into the router and get full bandwidth on my awesome Korean internet. So I am going to uh, start unboxing these and I will see you guys in a few minutes. All right, everybody. So I've got the box or the case out of the box and I've already grabbed the CPU out of here so this is the full size of the case like I said it's 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters by I like I said I think it's nine centimeters or something like that so go ahead and open this up there we go there's the little pin for the front headers set that off to the side here all right so as you can see on the board you've got your am4 socket i've already put the cpu in there's many videos on the internet on how to put a cpu in but easy version there is a triangle on the corner of the cpu and the socket has a triangle on the corner of it you just line them up drop it in lock it down easy enough so you have your two spots for DDR4 SO DIMMs, it takes laptop style memory. Uh, there's one of the M2s, there's the M2 Wi Fi. There is a, another M.2 on the back side of the motherboard, but I'd have to take the motherboard off for that and I don't need to get to it. And also on the back side, there are these two little uh, laptop style sockets for SATA connectors, which I've got one attached, and there's a second one that comes in the box. So this particular one, comes with the Wi-Fi card. And there is another front panel connector, which I haven't quite unwrapped yet, uh, for two more additional uh, USB 2.0 ports. So it's got one 2.0 and one 3.0, I think, on the back. And the front has another 3.0 and a USB Type-C. I don't know if that's 3.0 or 3.1. I think it's 3.0 because it's blue. I think 3.1 is red, so. 
On the back, you've also got a display port, a HDMI, and a VGA out, and built-in gigabit ethernet. Um, the box comes with a low profile heat sink, which I'm not actually going to use because I have read online that you can take the Wraith stealth cooler that comes with the CPU, uh, take the little plastic shrouding off the top and that it will fit in this case. So I'm going to try that first. Uh, the box also comes with the 120 watt power brick. So the power brick supplies enough power to run the processor at full blast, but it does not provide a whole lot of room for overclocking. So I will not be overclocking the processor, which is really strange for me because I hate leaving things stock. But I am going to overclock the memory because the faster the memory runs, the better the, the uh, graphics run. I am going to get into a little bit of assembly here real quick. We're going to fade to a time lapse and I'll be back in a few. So I've got the box assembled. Um, there was one minor catch in the thing in that apparently one of the sticks of RAM I was sent is DDR3 and not DDR4, therefore it won't work. So right now I've got eight gigs in single channel mode instead of 16 gigs in dual channel mode. But that'll still let me get it up and running and test it. I will just have to file a return and get a new one sent out. Failing me, Amazon. That's not good. No bueno. All right. So anyway, as you might can tell from our itty bitty little box here, it did come with the additional USB 2 ports, which there is a clip on the front that you have to tuck that in and wrap it around to get it to run. Otherwise it will jam up against the front of the motherboard when you try to slide it back in. I've got the wireless antennas, even though I'm planning on using the, the cabled connection. As you can see, I got the covering ring off of the Wraith Stealth Cooler, and it just barely fits in there. So we're going to plug this up in a second here and uh, see if it even turns on. So hold tight. All right, so I've got the power brick plugged in. I've got the HDMI cable plugged in. And I've got my little miniature keyboard here plugged in. So let's see if it blows up or not. Ooh, it is pretty quiet. Well, that's not working quite the way I wanted it to. I wonder what that blinking blue light is for. All right, time to start troubleshooting. All right, well, here we are. Um, I pulled, had to pull everything out and pull it back in again, but I found sometimes it is the simplest of things that trip you up. I didn't have the HDMI cable plugged all the way in. It was halfway in, which is why it wasn't displaying to the monitor. Anyway, so now I've got everything plugged back in. Hit the power button. And... Ooh, we got a boot media. Well, that's an improvement. At least now we're getting stuff on the screen. Let's see if we can get it into the BIOS. 
Aha! Yay! We have BIOS! So we're reading 8 gigs of single channel mode. Let's see, 3500. Let's try the XMP um, for now, because as we install Windows and we get the baseline, everything done, we want it to run at stock settings to make sure everything is good. And once we get everything loaded up, that's when we start tweaking the overclocking. Yeah. All right, so I'm back from dinner because we had a going away party for one of the guys from the office. And if you've ever been to Korea, office parties, and especially going away parties are a thing and soju is a thing but i'm back and i can get back to troubleshooting this thing if you break that thing you're not buying another one yes dear maybe i'll wait till tomorrow fishing. all right everybody well it's a actually a couple days later because stuff happened life's a pain all that good stuff um, anyway, so I'm back with my little system here and I have got it running. I've got Windows installed on it and all the drivers on it. I am waiting on replacement memory to come from Amazon because for some reason one of my sticks of RAM, as I told you earlier, uh, was mislabeled. So they actually sent me a stick of DDR3 RAM, which so not going to work. Uh, what I did do though with a little bit of testing was found out that the extra stick that I had from when I upgraded my laptop before, um, I overclocked it and managed to get it up to 2933 stable. So it would run pretty well and it would run a quick stress test and not flake out on me. So what I've done is I've got the new 3200 megahertz RAM in there with the old RAM clocked down to 2933. So at least it's running in dual channel memory mode and not simply in single channel mode. So throughput over bandwidth. Also, uh, while I was in there, I overclocked the graphics chipset slightly. Um, it seems to default to 1100 megahertz when it's running in Windows and I have um, set it to 1300. So we're going to run a little quick check on this and see how it works with those settings. So here we go. All right, here we are sitting in the BIOS. Uh, apologies for my low-tech uh, capture rig here. I do not have a capture card and I don't feel like buying one. So um, as you can see here, if you can see it, we are currently at 12 gigs in dual channel at 2933. And the GFX clock frequency is set to 1300. That's about all I'm gonna do, cause uh, this uh, power brick this thing runs off of does not have a lot of overhead on it in the realm of power draw for overclocking. So a little bit of graphics and RAM is all I'm gonna do there. Let's hit save and exit. And you guys can see the boot speeds on this. So that is not too bad to get to the login screen for what's a glorified HTPC is not bad to get to the uh, desktop that fast. So if we go into the task manager here, logical processor. So there's our four cores, base speed 3.5 gigahertz. Got our GPU set up there. So I am going to install a, a quick little benchmark utility real quick and we're gonna see how it runs. All right, so we're keeping it low key here. I'm sure pretty much anybody who builds computers even recreationally has heard of CPU-Z and GPU-Z. They're great little tools uh, to let you know what your hardware is reporting it's supposed to run at. So they also have some other tools um, such as the CPU ID hardware monitor, which I do not have open at the moment. 
They also have Power Max, which is a little quick stress test uh, that they have that you can run. So you can either run a CPU test, which I've got set for one minute at the moment, and you can see the CPU usage pegs up. If I had the CPU ID hardware monitor open, that is actually really good and it breaks it down. It'll tell you what each individual core is running at temperature wise, clock wise, uh, what the temperature on both the cores and the um, entire CPU package is, what the voltages it's pulling are. You know, that's just, it's really good for keeping an eye on what is causing your system to malfunction. But I'm not here to run a CPU test. So I'm going to close that. I didn't want to close the application. I just wanted to stop the test. All right. There we go. And GPU test. You've got two sizes you can run it at. I'm going to run it at the smaller at the moment so that I can actually see the windows I've got open here. So this test, although it says I'm only doing somewhere between five and a half and nine and a half frames per second, depending on where it's at, um, has a lot of things it's doing. It's got the textures on the ball. It's got a light source floating around. It's got reflections off both the ground and the orb. And you got whatever that hairy ball looking thing is. There's a lot going on here that it's got to render shadows, reflections, colors, textures. So. This is a pretty, uh, pretty decent, at least low level test. It's not exactly running Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Blender or anything on it, but um, I believe my main rig, which has a uh, 1060 in it, only scores somewhere in the range of, uh, I think it's 15 to 16 FPS in this test. So, well, there we go. We had a lot of GPU usage. Ooh, let's get down to that real quick. There you go, you can see what the 3D level was, dedicated memory usage. So it seems to be doing pretty good. Next uh, thing I guess I've got to do is take it downstairs, hook it up and stream some movies on it. So I will get back to that. All right, so to finish up on the status of my media PC, I did receive my replacement stick of 3200 RAM the other day. So I got that installed and overclocked the 3400 because overclock. Um, so it is in place and it is now currently streaming a 4K feed, some Miami music, vi Miami music video thing. But other than that, it is in place. Right now it's running off the wireless. I got my little ethernet cable plugged into my ethernet over power adapter. So if I can do 4K, over the wireless network, the ethernet cable should be complete overkill. So, my media center is now complete. Mwahaha! Next in my evil plan of world domination, when Ryzen 3 comes out, I'll upgrade my computer. Hey, hey. Anyway, that's it for this video. Guys, have fun if you're techie. If you're not, well, you're probably still not here. So, hey, there's that. Have fun.